Welcome back, Dota 2 fans. Game three, decider winner goes on to face Spirit tomorrow in the quarterfinals of these ESL1 Hamburg CIS qualifiers, MRP, Franz, Gambit, I play. Uh, facing off in this decider, Franz, you've seen two games now. Is it just a matter of draft in this third one, execution? Does one team have the advantage to you, or what are you looking for in this third match? Any key bands? I leave myself muted on Discord. I speak for the trees. Check it out, guys. I did not. Franz is AFK. Night stuffing his fat face. He's not even fat. He's like. Wilson will be back, I promise. But either way, continuing with the theme is Gambit Esports. Vision, map control, you know, ability to push lanes in. Spearbreaker has been picked in every single one of these games. And now it will be back in the hands of iPlay. So Profit going to be picked into the Spearbreaker, believe it or not, from Gambit. And I suppose they don't feel that it's necessarily for a hard counter. Franz kind of mentioned last game, you know, the ability to show yourself in lane and quickly extract yourself from lane uh, as nature's profit. Once you keep, you know, in mind uh, all game long that you have a spirit breaker charging you and play around it. So Omni Knight pick early comes out for I play. This uh. First pick, these first, yeah, yeah, I'm back. So, these first two picks from I play out on the United Spirit Breaker, you know, two really tanky uh, strength heroes, and it can cause a little bit of an issue because Night Stalker as a roamer doesn't do a ton of damage. Night Stalker and Bounty Hunter, they're they're like in a similar boat, they're better in, in scenarios where they can actually successfully trade with the enemy team. Mm -hmm. The only problem that I play have with these first two picks is that. Neither of these heroes deal with the Nature's Prophet alone. Right. Uh, they have to work together with the other heroes on their team. And so when you have a dual combination like Nature's Prophet and Na Night Stalker, as, son as soon as the Na Nature's Prophet is set up in the lane and the Night Stalker comes in, there's a ton of potential for kills or a ton of potential to, pick pe or to push people out of the lane. And so I play with their other... With their next two picks, they have to deal. They have to pick a way to deal with the Nature's Prophet, so that the Spirit Breaker can dedicate his time to making sure the Night Stalker doesn't get anything done. So looking to effectively counter his movements. I mean, these two heroes in their own right are decent at trading in the early game. Spirit Breaker very uh, high base HP pool. You got the Omni Knight with you know naturally with the purification, especially once he gets a Soul Ring up. Um, so there is ways to deal with the Nature's Prophet, but as you mentioned, just having kind of that dedicated support, you know, something like a Wintered Wyvern can allow these heroes to get a little bit more done elsewhere on the map, counteract the movement of the Night Stalker. But not much was revealed from either side just yet. In the drafts. Ursa ban comes out uh, from the iPlay side, and they're going to ban out the Veno Cancer as well uh, after Game 2's. So the, the tricky part about Nature's Prophet is that if he has Treants up and you can't deal with the Treants or you can't deal with the hero, mm -hmm. then he just starts trading hits with you like crazy and, and you, you can't fight back. And so there's two ways to deal with it. Either you kill the Treants or you somehow get on top of him so that he can't trade hits with you. So Spirit Breaker is good at getting on top of him. He can't deal damage though. So I play, they have to solve that issue. But Gambit... They're in a comfortable Bane. position. They pick Bane. Uh, Bane probably sets up. Uh, they probably picked it to set up something uh, like one of their lanes because Bane's a really strong lane support just because he trades hits really well. But also, that Nightmare uh, can be used to set up a lot of various spells, namely Mirana Arrow, but there's a lot of other things you can combine it with. Yeah, it is a way to potentially ignore the Omni Knight as well. Pretty a quick cast point um, if you see the Spirit Breaker coming in, if you've got good enough vision set up. And as you mentioned, I think you know the, the greatest 
uh, benefit that they get out of this Bane pick is that it can just allow the Night Stalker to freely roam. He's pretty much a self-sufficient support in lane. Can keep himself sustained. Uh, has good right click. Has the brain sap as well. Trade with the offlaner pretty effectively. Jakiro pick again from iPlay. So both teams really favoring this uh, Spirit Breaker and Jakiro. They've been picked in all three games thus far. And now we get a little bit of variability. The Monkey King and the Instant Response Troll Warlord uh, here for iPlay side. So Monkey King is a really strong laner as soon as he gets set up. So really, realistically, there's no melee hero in the game that can trade heads with a Monkey King. Uh, maybe Ursa, but that's, uh, that's a little bit of a tricky fight because Monkey King can sort of kite melee heroes around. And so that makes Monkey King good against the Omni Knight uh, because it looks like this, this Omni Knight is going to be the off laner for I play. So... Pretty cool pickup from Gambit. They also have a Bane to help set up kills on the Omni Knight and help zone him out. So Monkey King should have a pretty good time in his lane. And set up this Primal Spring as well uh, for that extra slow with the uh, with the Nightmare. Definitely seems oh. like a pretty potent combo. Troll Warlord is a good pick against Nature's Prophet if that's going to be the matchup that I play is looking for. Just because the whirling axes helps you trade hits with him, and it right. also blinds the the treants. So that's one hero I've seen people pick up against Nature's Prophet. And you know, yeah, he Nature's maybe Pro has the potential to forego BKB in this game as well with the repel behind him. I wouldn't do that. I mean, <laughs> Night Soccer spells are still very annoying. Uh, for Troll Warlord, you get slowed, you get blind, or you get a uh, mischance. So. I'd still probably go BKB on Troll this game. Oh, you have the Repel, I guess. That's the thing you were talking about. Right. Thinking about. Right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine then. Yeah, maybe you can skip uh, BKB. Puck's going to be the ban coming out from... The, I the ideal Troll Warlord build is like Vlad's, Sons and Yasha, Blink BKB, mm -hmm. and then like MKB or whatever damage item you need last. So... BKB just seems too important on, on that hero to rely right. on. Yeah, no, agreed. Because your whole hero is based around getting on top of someone and then killing them within your ulti. And if you can't do that, then the hero doesn't function. You get kited around. I was uh, thinking maybe the Omni Knight affords him to go at third instead of second item or something along those lines. But they're going to round out their lineup with the Viper. Viper. Gives him a little bit of a siege potential here. He's a difficult gank for the prophet early on as well. The problem with the Viper stalker. this game is that he doesn't help prevent split push. Uh, he really, realistically, he only sits in lane. He doesn't, and in the mid game, he can't really push out lanes safely because he doesn't have any uh, movement and so or mobility skills and so. This means that I play have to not fall behind in the early game because if Gambit get in a position where their Monkey King and Nature's Prophet can split push and look for kills, I play don't really have an answer for that. Troll Warlord and Viper as cores, they don't want to move around in the first 10 minutes until they have a couple of items. And even when they do, they can't exactly f keep up and follow around the. Spirit Breaker, at least until... Brood mother. Makes perfect play. sense to me. I was thinking it just as you were speaking with that Viper pick. I think you touched upon it most. They have no wave clear. They're almost all single target. Um, you know, the nukes from Troll aren't amazing at, at clearing waves. They're good for trading, as you mentioned, because of the mischance, but um, you can just throw this, this Brood Mother 1v1 mid uh, against the Viper, and he's going to be a difficult kill. Uh, for the I play side, they're pretty static supports, uh, or pretty static support uh, in the Jakiro. So it's going to take a lot for them to bring down the Brood just with the Spirit Breaker and the Viper. We'll see how they fare. Obviously, there's going to be a Night Stalker roaming around as well for Gambit Esports side. Uh, I really like the Brood pick. I don't know how you feel about it in this one. Maybe not quite as potent as it was last game, but should feel pretty independently uh, capable in this one. Yeah, the last game was like an exception because the enemy team had. Literally zero AOE mm -hmm. abilities aside from Nature's Prophet ulti. But in this game, they have the Troll Axes yeah. and Omni Knight Purification. And was there a Spear Break? The Spear Breaker was on the Brood's team last time. So this isn't like as good of a Brood game, but it's still mm -hmm. quite good. 
Uh, of course, there's a lot more threat to the Broodmother this game, just because I think when you have a hero like Spirit Breaker that is like the most brainless, most most simple initiation right. on Brood, uh, you have to be a little bit more worried. So I'm confident he can make that lane work. But and if he does, then his team's in a really good position. The problem is that if if uh, uh, Gambit don't come ahead in the mid game, I play can actually just push and, and end it because there's really no team fight coming out of Gambit. Absolutely no team fight abilities actually aside from Monkey King ult. So there's nothing stopping I play from just getting Aegis and running over some Raxes. Yeah, they definitely do not lack siege in this one. They have the repel behind them. They have the Nether Toxin. They have the Troll, who's a great building hunter, and the Liquid Fire to slow towers attacks. And Again, so it feels like Gambit's pretty of, momentum based here. A little bit of chat happening. Mm -hmm. I believe they have to consult the uh, tournament rules for this. this I'm sure they'll switch the server here because we've played Stockholm the first two games, so. Is that usually how it works in Europe? Because I know in this, in the, it's, it's usually in one each, and then coin flip. Um, as far as I've, you know, as far as my uh, experience tells, but I guess in this game they didn't even. Uh, I suppose uh, Gambit didn't even actually make the claim that they wanted to play on a different server until now. But because we played two on Stockholm, I, I don't see them being turned down. Yeah. All right. There goes the Russian. Do you can you understand Russian? Yeah, I I I I That's about <laughs> that's about the extent of my Russian. It gets right replied by an XD. I love it. <laughs> In North America, pretty much all the tournaments are played on US East, and no no one really touches US West for tournament mm -hmm. play, as far as I know. It's always the darn Europeans that complain about ping. <laughs> that's because they play on well, ridiculously low ping. All the time, so we're more used to it, I suppose. Yeah. The Western yeah, I hemisphere. Get, I get more, I get more ping to US East than my friend on, uh, in London gets to US East. I get like ninety, he gets like sixty somehow, and so really, he always complains about playing on US East because on Europe West they get like ten ping. Mm -hmm. I get nine ping on US West, so Just no solo queue games or tournaments are played on there. But going back into the game. The troll warlord starts with a poor man's shield. He's actually going to go mid, it looks like, with this yeah. item setup. Makes sense against the brood. Probably fares better than the viper would. Probably guessing that the brood's going mid, but brood's not obligated to go mid. And I'd argue that brood is actually better in a side lane because it force it makes the enemy team think you can deal with the brood, uh, and it forces the supports to go to a to one side of the map rather rather than middle because if the supports are, are stuck in middle that still gives them two two other lanes to to move to so nature's prophet most likely going to be off lane because he has the boots first starting so it does look like that's their laning configuration just based on items i'm gonna guess that the uh the admins afk Seems like it. <laughs> oh boy. EU, you know. Once you know, one one more game, we'll get back to North America, Franz, I promise. <laughs> Hell yeah. We got yeah, some good games wrong, though. Some EU Dota. Yeah, absolutely. We got some good games in EU tomorrow. Um we start off with Vega versus Navi, so a couple of fan favorites there. That's gonna be really interesting to see in the new uh Vega squad. They also have the uh, former TNC coach joining them. Uh, so that should be certainly very fun. Uh, second match of the day will be Spirit versus the winner of this matchup. And on the other line, Virtus Pro and Empire uh, will both face the earlier winners from today as well. Uh, which would have been, I believe, M19 and Effect, respectively. But beyond that, we have Immortals versus Iceberg coming up today after this game, which is... Nice to see the uh, reassemblance of Korean Dota. All right, everyone is disconnected. Are we remaking? Like it. Let's do yep. it. 
I Same would throw us in the weight screen, but eh. Eh. Just don't paste the uh the password into yeah. the box. <laughs> Alright, we did it. Throw your stream key in there too. <laughs> well, you know, we always want a more interactive experience with chat and what better way <laughs> to let them contribute than to let them stream themselves. Uh, may have gone better than the first series today if they streamed, honestly. But we got things smoothed out. So Immortals in the first matchup, and then Immortals will move on to face. Uh, it's either Complexity or DC. So, I, well, I mean, I'm assuming Immortals. Um, not necessarily a stretch, but maybe a bit of an oversight. And then we've got Wheel Wreck while whistling versus Mind's Eye. That's Winner will face the other of Cole and DC. So tomorrow, very, very hype matches starting beginning tomorrow. And then semifinals on that on Saturday. All right, 9 out of 10 in lobby. Server is Lux. We won't have to remake once again. <laughs> Ticket is available for ESL One Hamburg already, guys. Be the first major of the season. Five hundred thousand dollars to first place, as well as a three. Seven hundred and fifty BPC points up or grabs. Back into the draft we go, Franz. Can you predict all ten picks? Go. <laughs> uh, Troll Warlord, Omni Knight, Spirit of Monkey King, <laughs> Viper. I'm missing one. Bang. It was a ranged hero. Troll Warlord. Night Stalker. That's what it was. It's Jakiro. Jakiro. Correct. Yeah. I love how it still does uh, this pick Knight. style. All the intros. It's got to be staggered too, right? Jakiro. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I think if they all loaded at once, I love we'd how have Valve issues. coded that actually. That's, I speak that's cool. for the trees. I was just expecting like some bug or crash to occur if, if they all just picked at the same time. The camera just wouldn't know where to move. <laughs> All right. Oh. Prepared we were. Back into the go. Viper is a hit or miss mid hero, but most of the time he's a hit because he wins 80% of the lane matchups he's against. And so the only time that Viper suffers is if he gets behind or, or ganked in the lane. Uh, at that point, he's super super uh, messed up because mm. that hero does not he doesn't function when he's behind and he doesn't farm when he's blind so right he not really, a comeback hero by any stretch really yeah and so i think vp no one is is like the one person i think that's really cool when he plays viper because he somehow always manages to get farm on that hero and he's somehow i think he just understands the importance of of, of getting farm on that hero so you'll you'll never see him leave the mid lane and you'll never see him lose the lane either. Like he, he always does extra things to make sure that he never falls behind. And so you end up seeing like, like that kind of style. It ends up translating into like top net worth vipers. They can't deal with you. You become the kite master two thousand, and uh, <laughs> no one kills you. And you. Sometimes you buy a hood and end up with like seventy percent magic resist or something ridiculous. Kite master two thousand. Already uh, recycle that term. So Jakiro, uh, I think it's always oh, always want to fly was last game. It's on the wrong team. Anyways, makes his way up to the cliff here to place this war down, and he saw Bane walking this way, and thereafter he pinged exactly this cliff spot. So we may see that the radiant get a D ward there. That'll be a nice little influx of gold for the off laner, more than likely, uh, if they ferry him out essentially. <laughs> 
And it is going to be the Viper in the off lane. So you mentioned kind of the feast or famine, unforgiving nature of this hero. We'll see how he fares here. Uh, it is going to be the Viper versus Brood matchup. So, or, uh, excuse me, Viper versus Nature's Prophet matchup. So we'll see how he fares. As you mentioned, they do have the Spear Breaker to get on top of the Prophet. And certainly Viper is one and contribute a lot of damage once that happens. So for now, we'll see Bignum. Uh, have his presence over towards the top lane on the Night Soccer. Meanwhile, mid lane always want to fly, just being an, a nuisance, throwing out the Enfeeble, oh doing a little God. trading. Enfeeble level one feels bad. I don't that know what's is... worse. <laughs> like, if you get Lich to lane it, at least you're like, hey, that that's how the Lich should be playing, right? Mm -hmm. If you get Enfeebled at level one, you're like, Whoa. oh. Okay. okay. You, knew, you knew I missed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were just looking at the enfeeble I mean, feeling bad. I was expecting a, a tower dive at, at well, less than four minutes. Degen Aura skilled level one on the Omni Knight. So oh, dual man, breath Degen Aura, it's a lot of slow. This is the the pub skill build on the Omni Knight. Degen Aura first. He's got that Orb of Venom queued up. This is not, not the lane Monkey King asked for. <laughs> And also, oh. uh, the one thing that people forget about Jigiro a lot is that Dual Rather Breath and no. Liquid Fire provide attack slows. And so when he applies those two attack slows on you, you can no longer trade hits with, with the Jigiro uh, lane. Uh, Even as a Monkey King, Jingu Mastery. 58% attack slow is almost all of your attack speed at, at level 1. So This Nature's Prophet has the... Night Stalker with him in this lane. Looks like the Night Stalker is stacking and pulling, which is probably the correct decision since you don't actually want to fight the Spirit Breaker and Viper. You're okay with just farming. Uh, Gold because as the, nature's pro as the Nature's Prophet levels up, he scales a lot faster than the Viper, at least for the first six levels. So if uh, I think the idea is you get the Nature's Prophet where he wants to be, and then the Nature's Prophet will win the other lanes for you. Hey, Bottom lane, lane. they look to go in on... The Monkey King once again. He does get his Jingo Mastery stacks. One more right click from the Bane. Will finish off the Jakiro. And always want to fly. Floating his way over to that bottom lane unbeknownst to the Radiant side. And now the charge for the Night Stalker. Wow, he's moving fast right now. Has a Haste Rune. Void is there onto the Omni Knight. Does have a Purification. And that'll seemingly be all she wrote for this engagement. Although, always want to fly. Could be pincered in here. It's going to be pursued by the Jakiro. And scout it out shortly here. Dual Breath is available for the Bane. They won't expend it just yet. Uh, Troll doing extremely Bane's admirably dead. mid. He can't escape. Degenora. Goodbye. Orb of Venom. Well, he gets the Brain Sap off, though. And with the MK nearby. I was just going to say, Troll doing very well mid lane, uh, despite all the presence from the Bane. 21 and 2 to the 23 and 5 of his laning counterpart. And the Spirit Breaker nearby as well. Does not have dust on his person, though. So it would have been a very difficult kill. I believe uh, Troll has the, or sorry, Broom rather has the the sentry advantage. So Troll actually doesn't want to use his axes unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and while top lane, Shashari Cat in trouble gets the defensive sprout off. Bash onto the tree end. Oh no! Could this cost them the kill? Poison? Oh, the poison attack should give them enough slow, and they will get the kill regardless no response queued up either way as well uh it is nighttime though first night just in a moment and bignum will pick up level two so not you know quite maybe level three but uh, he does at least have a point now in hunter in the night has a double damage rune as well and mufasa just double uses his uh, melee axes in lane is this potentially that the opening uh the dire is looking for this could be a kill on the troll Bignum jumping forward, finds the Void. Prophet in as well. They get the blind off onto two heroes, and they have the Sprout. He'll get immediately get off the Quelling Blade. Bignum should have a Void in another second, and does. With the double damage rune, they'll get the Troll first. Looks like Return Kill will come through from the Spear Breaker. He tries to fly away the Viper coming through with one last right click. Two points in that Poison Attack, and one in the Nether Toxin will secure him a kill there on Bignum. Still, though, worthwhile trade. Uh, although having your Night Stalker die uh, in the middle of nighttime, not necessarily That's ideal, mine. despite you know, him being level two, five second respawn, he's right back down to the bottom lane, uh, almost convenient for the Night Stalker. Exactly. 
And the bo Boundless Strike rolling through. Degen Aura is there. Always want to fly. Needs a little bit more Mango Purification. We'll keep the Omni safe for now. Charge coming through three. Actually canceled before it hits the Night Stalker. They look to go in onto the Monkey King. And MK still standing with his comrades. Bignum in a little bit of trouble and will be brought down a couple more earthquakes. Now Always Wanna Fly gonna die as well. He gets charged up, bashed, and brought down. Another free trip to the fountain for Bignum. This time though, TP scroll on cooldown. So that one gonna hurt a lot more than the first. A nice little win in that bottom lane uh, for the Radiant size. Still though, the Prophet Kind of having his way with this early game. Contributes in on the troll kill. Up top farming. Level 5. See what he's able to get done here. Brood doing fairly well for herself as well. Sitting atop the net worth chart. And the CS chart for that matter. I play. They pretty much have a... Uh, their Omni Knight's like unkillable. Uh, if, as he starts getting levels. And so... I play. They can start being less worried about this bottom lane. And more worried about rotations onto their troll warlord because they do need this troll to stay alive in order to keep this mid tower alive Bignum's gonna find the spirit breaker behind enemy lines and he will get pinged out still though Mufasa postured up pretty aggressively here Invisibility. gets the blind off and maybe this is an opening for them to go and Bignum has wandered off towards the top lane however the Viper resides. They are going to need one more, it feels, to kill this Viper, and they don't have it at the moment. Ignum under the cover of invisibility. No TPs inbound just yet. As Shashari Cat will clean up the wave under the tower. They can't actually kill him. It's just going to take a while. They go in. First yeah, right click. Avoid is there them. as well. They should have a sprout in just a second, and they do. A couple more right clicks. He'll get off. The Tango, and he will be safe for the time being. Charge coming through as well, but it's onto a tree end. We'll connect onto Bignum. They get the Ice Path off as well. This Night Soccer, though, pretty tanky at this point. We'll be able to utilize that Hunter in the Night Active, get himself away. Quite a bit of discipline from Gambit to back off there. I mean, they noticed a bunch of heroes are missing, and they probably checked to see that the Viper had a lot of one charges, I think seven, and so that wasn't an easy kill by any means, so good decision from Gamma to back up there. Yeah, and now they'll posture up bottom lane where they look to take this tower, the Omni Knight. Level five at this point, three zero two build. Not an easy kill by any right. Nature, nice Ooh. nightmare to cancel the charge as well. Do they look to go in on this? They have a balance strike available and they will drop it. Couple more right clicks coming through. Ice path is there, however, and will be dodged momentarily by the Monkey King. Always want to fly. Gonna get charged up, bashed down. Feels like that's the second up. time mm -hmm. Gambit has ganked themselves to the Somni Knight. For me. You just think about the, the numbers of fortune. purification. It's quite ridiculous, like in a fight. At level 3 purification, it's a 460 HP swing on a on a 9 second cooldown. So, purification is a pretty good spell. <laughs> the, and with Bignum up top right as nighttime expires, he's going to be a little bit more innocuous as a hero just in general for the next little bit. So perhaps just tries to find a couple of levels here sitting in lane monkey kings rotated up towards the top but doesn't have a point in the tree dance at this moment so it's going to be hard uh, as he just dings and skills it up he didn't actually ding but he was holding the skill point and they kind of overlap the sprout and the boundless strike here the purification and the repel here to turn the fight charge cancels the tp bignum's going to be the first of all they could be in trouble for more there is no mana up on the Monkey King, he'll be dropped. Another right click. And a perfect timing to turn it from the Omni Knight with the Viper there. Gets them a couple of kills. Gambit looking shaky in this early game. Really the only hero doing at all well for them is this Broodmother in the mid lane. The cool thing about iPlay's laning setup is between the Poor Man's Shield on the Troll and the Corrosive Skin on the Viper, it takes so long for Gambit to actually burst down one of these heroes, and as I say that, action happening mid. 
burst diffusal blade charge used there by Kunum. Now, maybe the Spirit Breaker a little bit deep behind enemy lines, but continues to body back the Broodmother. Nightmare Force to be used defensively, and that'll be Insatiable Hunger you know, off the board for the next couple of seconds, but maybe more importantly, that first diffusal charge used and not going to net themselves a kill. These two fours on I place team, the troll and the viper, they take so long to kill, mm -hmm. but there's always enough time for for their team to react, and I think that's what's happened in these last two engagements. So, the viper they counter initiated on that gank attempt, uh, the troll they saved them quite easily, and down and bottom like the the omni knight. I mean, gambit just doesn't have insane amounts of damage. They have pretty good yeah. damage, but it's not high enough. To, to kill heroes before the Omni Knight or the Spirit Breaker rotates in. Rude Mother looking to find something near the Ancient Stack here. But we'll take a peek, see two heroes, and make his way back down to the low ground. In the meantime, Viper able to take out the Dire Safe Lane Tier 1. And it'll be a nice little influx of gold going his way, and he's already pole vaulted his way up. He's second overall on the net worth chart, going to build into that typical Dragon Lance. Already has the Ogre Club on the way out, so. Not all that far away, as you mentioned. Hanky innately only going to get more so. Yeah. You know, forward. Gambit has an issue when they have a Broodmother and a, and a Nature's Prophet and they lose all the, the tower towers. the enemy team. Yeah, all the towers still standing here. So, I mean, Broodmother mid is just sort of strange because... The supports, uh, the enemy support and the enemy mid wants to be mid lane. Like, the mid tower is so important. Whereas if you have a broodmother in a side lane, there's more camps to work with, mm -hmm. uh, there's more space to work with, and most most importantly, if a support My. or a core rotates to your side lane to kill you, that frees up space on another part of the map. And so at, at this point, the brood, even though like she's farming quite well, like she's top net worth, but whether or not she can make something happen with this net worth is gonna be a different question because mm -hmm. I play they have a lot of ways to deal with her you got the spirit breaker you have Omni Knight like a single purification is gonna kill half of those spiders so or like all the weak spiders they actually have names spiderlings and spider ice mm -hmm. I did not know that cool EIL 8 to 2 here 12 minutes in for I play side as far as the metrics go Kind of a docile lead, 2k, um, but the map control does seem to be at this point in their favor. They have these tanky cores and the Omni Knight, the Viper, and the Troll that they can kind of just throw in lanes and uh, look to bait. Tank bottom with Fiend's Grip. Fear quiets magic. It will Fiend's Grip him up. Crippling Fear is there as well. Void, not needed. Boundless Strike will secure the kill for the Monkey King, who could really use some farm at this point. I think even after that kill overall, sixth on net worth, the bottom of all the cores in the game still nighttime persists for another three minutes or so minutes and 40 seconds and bignum will continue to press forward alongside always want to fly charge away now the jikiro going to be in trouble gets voided up and pretty much just abandoned by the spirit breaker right before he's aggressed upon so unfortunate bit of timing for i play and they will end up losing their jakiro and likely this will mean the bottom tier one goes down as well for the radiant we'll see uh, if they're actually willing to approach it for the gambit side but for now they're going to disperse and they get gambit they notice a, a very small opening here uh, i'll say really quick so viper tp bot so the viper can't show up to another lane nature's prophet tp's top which means that another TP will be expended, which means Brood potentially can get this bottom tier 1. So I think at least one tier 1 will drop in the next half minute. But as I say, that looks like Gamma's backing out from all the lanes. So. Meanwhile, bottom lane battle trance used up. Jump forward, big bash. Gonna finish off the Monkey King. Nether Strike is there as well onto Big Num. Earn tick. Still, though, the Crippling Fear keeps the Viper from being able to slow Big Num. And for that reason, he will be able to get out to the north. A lot of damage taken by this tier 1 mid as well by the Troll Warlord in the meantime as he used that battle trance for bot lane. Nature's Prophet has drums working on a solar crust. It's a little bit of a strange item build. I think this game he definitely would have wanted something like a Maelstrom just to help him farm a little bit more quickly. Since... They're effectively, uh, Gambit's 
game plan is to stall the game. Mid lane, they get the defusal charge off onto the Chikiro. He will die once again. Nature's wrath. And as you predicted, this tier one mid going to go down in the favor of the Dire. In the meantime, though, they lose both their towers in the off lane. So Jakiro, well worth it for them. Uh, they do not have a glyph here mid lane, but they'll TP in. And even just the presence of the Omni Knight at this moment will deter Gambit from pressing for it. Always want to fight. Does not get bash. Luckily, we'll be able to TP out near the shrine. But successfully defended is the Radiant Tier 1 mid lane. And you talked about kind of the nature of the lineups. Prophet and Broodmother on the dire side. Four towers. Sustains momentarily will be eliminated from them whereas they haven't had one for themselves could go down here as well Rude in a lot of trouble the one sort of silver lining in this early game for the dire side is going to be taken out here and spearbreaker having a lot of impact is that the brood has to be the hero that makes something happen because the brood is by far their highest net worth but it's hard for them to make stuff happen because they have zero... They have one stun, the Monkey King stun, but you don't really want to use that to initiate. Mm -hmm. uh, Meanwhile, over on the west side, they're going to find a target. It's going to be Bignum's Nice Talker. He is very fast, gets slowed up by the ranged Whirling Axes and will be able to fly over the stairs back to safety. But they know he's going to be out of position for this mid lane tier 2 push. And they will queue it up with the Nether Toxin and Liquid Fire should make quick work. Of this tower. Uh, you can tell this Viper went into full fighting mode because he maxed his poison attack first instead of Nether Toxin. Uh, also because he didn't really have a lane opponent. Usually you would put more points in Nether Toxin if you were planning to sit in a lane and mm -hmm. farm a bit more. Mine. So Omni Knight has a four staff. I mean, because Gambit has zero stuns, it's actually really difficult for them to deal with iPlay's lineup because you have to deal with the cores, the Viper, the Troll, but also no matter who you go on, go on the, the Omni Knight is going to save them. And you can't really even kill this Omni Knight now either because he has a 4 staff. I mean, is there onus on the Brood to try and open up the map a little bit for Gambit? It feels like she's been farming the jungle for the last little bit and. Now, there's just not enough to, of that to go around with the tricore uh, for they Gambit side. Do, they have to make do with what they can, what they have. Right? Mm -hmm. They have to be looking for kills. There's no way they just try to out farm. No Ice path will whiff in the mid lane. They're still jumping forward though, looking for Kumen. He gets another uh, web off, but the Nether Strike keeps him back. Nice grip onto the Troll Warlord, but no real follow up. And now always want to fly. He's caught out in No Man's Land. Gets slowed up. Ice path is there. A couple more right clicks. Purification finishes him off. Two heroes on the sideline, neither of which have buyback. In the meantime, a Monkey King split pushing bottom lane is not the scariest of propositions uh, for iPlay uh, to be facing and they will jump up towards mid lane where already half of the HP of this tier 3 tower goes down. Boundless Strike will connect onto 2 and the Wukong's Command is going to be thrown out uh, although it is a fairly defensively placed Wukong's Command and simply uh, iPlay will walk out and let it expire. I am in your debt. So really not a lot of anti-push from Gambit. Come forward, Primal Spring right into a bash and an ice path. Defensive Nightmare is there, but the charge through will connect onto the Monkey King, who's forced to buy back. And it looks like I play may just be content with this. They don't have a charge just yet. They will break the trees and allow the Spirit Breaker to make it out. Flying over the cliff is Bignum looking for an initiation. He will flank the back lines. Balance Strike does connect onto a few, but the Guardian Angel keeping them alive for now. Now the Broodmother in trouble and will end up dropping 50 seconds. No buyback for that Broodmother. Liquid Fire into the melee racks and the Troll going to start right clicking. Bignum does find himself a kill on the Spirit Breaker, but it'll cost him his life. And he'll immediately be forced to buy back. Big Nature's Wrath coming through. Wrath of Nature, I should say. And a Boundless Strike connecting on the back lines. And it will take one out. That is going to be the Jakiro. Still, though, with the Repel and the tankiness of the Viper, it feels like those two major cores should be able to make it back out to safety. They turn Void up the Omni Knight. And that'll allow the TP of the Viper to complete successfully. So they do lose three heroes up on that high ground. But... Sub 20 minutes in, they will cost 
uh, a melee racks and a buyback on the night soccer and the monkey king for gambit esports so heavily on the back foot after that set of happenstances this is i play playing their lineup really well i mean there's really no ans no answer from Gambit for the troll and the, the Viper and it's made even worse because there's an oh, Omni Knight backing them up, so, so really good decision to go for the Rax there and Gambit's starting to work on Roche. They might just get this actually with the Solar Cross. This could be the opening they're looking for, but already nearby around the pits, defensive or uh, offensive nightmare goes out onto the Viper, Boundless Strike connects onto two, but always want to fly just left for dead with the Diffusal Blade. Shashari Cat in a lot of trouble as well. Right outside the Wukong's command, Troll will continue to press forward to the north. And now the Monkey King in trouble gets charged up, encroached upon by three different heroes. Shashari Cat trying to TP back into the fight and save his Monkey King, unsuccessful in doing so. No heroes, no casualties expended for I play here. Bignum may be in trouble now. Ice path available. They'll just throw out the liquid fires. It costs them nothing for now. Uh, and ensure that Mufasa can finish off this Roche. I play the open qualifier team. The underdog looking to have a very firm grasp on this one. Uh, troll didn't go for the ranged bash. I actually don't know if that's possible anymore. But... It's like I play, they flip the Roshan attempt into their own Rosh. And so, Gambit, they're in a lot of trouble right now. Mm -hmm. They have to. Realistically, they can't split push uh, the map at this point. I mean, mid lane's already at their, their base. Bottom lane's halfway across the map and pushing onto their side. So, they have to fight this top lane. Split pushing is not, not an alternative in this scenario. So, they have to pull off a hell of a fight to defend this Rags. And yeah, Kuman not going to have his BKB for this one. They just really don't have any big team fight control. You know, just the boundless strike as far as AoE disable goes. And uh, they will connect onto two, but that's a big cooldown expended right at the beginning of this push. I mean, relatively big. As the charge goes in from the Spirit Breaker, Primal Spring going to connect. They force staff him back out. Fiend's Grip is going to be there onto the troll, but they do have the Omni Knight behind him. He'll get repelled up. Ice Path is going to connect on two. Macro Pyre is there. Mufasa still has H's, even though he's taking a lot of damage here. Guardian Angel will stop him from taking the Boundless Strike damage. Charge will finish off the Nature's Prophet, who does not have buyback. And now Glyph going to be expended. They'll go forward trying to find Kuman. He can't get any right clicks off with the Insatiable Hunger. Will get under the cover of invisibility just in the nick of time to survive. But that's going to mean this tier 3 is forfeit. And perhaps the Rax as well. Bignum maybe looking to jump forward. Wukong's command is there. Omni Knight though still fairly healthy on the back lines. And has more than enough with the Aether Lens cast range to keep his cores alive. They'll just throw the Viper and the Troll on the front lines and finish off these Raxes. Repel will be there. A couple more right clicks through the melee racks. And a clean disengage for iPlay. Yep, really, really good racks. Uh, high ground down there from iPlay. And they still have ages, so they can choose to regroup and go bottom. I mean, and that they will jump forward with the purification as well as the dust to slow down Kuman. And they finish him off. Charge comes through. Always want to fly. Not there in time to cancel it. Now the Nether Strike onto the Brood Mother. Brood going to drop here. Ice Path connects on a few. Mufasa on the south side. He's going to take out the Bane. Bignum out of mana here is going to be finished off as well. Double kill for the troll. And the towel will be thrown in by the Dire Side as I play the open qualifier team. Absolutely roll Gambit Esports in this third game. I think the, the game was pretty much lost the moment that Gambit overextended two of their ganks. You know, realistically, the only way they win this game is that if they're playing from ahead, so that they split push with the Brood and the Nature's Prophet. I think that's what they were going for with their lineup. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, two of their gank attempts, I think one of them on bottom, and then one at top, they got counter-initiated counter on, and they lost, like, two heroes or two or three heroes twice in a row, and... From then on, I think it was just very difficult for them to win. So, really well played by I play. They uh, take this series two to one. Great laning decision from them as well. Kind of keeping the brute mother a little bit predictable, a little bit static. As you mentioned, 12, 12 or thirteen minutes in, all the tier ones down uh, in the favor of the radiant side, and the profit brood mother team did not yet have a tower under their belt. So, really well played by I play here.
uh, and well-drafted as well in this third game. Spirit Breaker Jakiro, the theme of this series, has picked up in every uh, single game as a combination together. But either way, I play going to move on. They're going to face Team Spirit tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Uh, our earlier victor, Navi, the fan favorite, going to take on Vega Squadron uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. That starts tomorrow, a.m. 10 a.m. EDT. Till then, we've got two more series coming your way, and the first of which is going to feature Immortals. We'll see how QO and the Korean boys get off to uh, starting off their new old roster, uh, so to speak, up against Iceberg Esports. So stay tuned, guys. That is going to happen uh, relatively shortly. It's actually scheduled for nine minutes ago, so we'll get into that as soon as possible. We'll be back, guys. MRP and Franz ESL1 Hamburg Qualifiers.